This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's talk a little bit about some backstage turmoil as we head into the show. Quote, the most talked about story of the last week regarding the show was the decision made on March 27th to take Joey Styles off of the show and replace him with Jim Ross doing the raw matches with Jonathan Coachman and Jerry Lawler. Styles was told and has been told from the start not to call moves or call the matches a sporting event, but to tell stories. It goes against how he was taught. Plus he came into the equation with plenty of people not liking him and waiting to pick on things to call him a failure. He was not used to working with partners, especially one as aggressive in the booth as coachman who pretty well takes over when he's out there, no matter how it's sliced, it can't be said it's anything, but a major vote of no confidence and a slap in the face. At this point, styles is expected to remain the lead voice of raw, but he's in a weird spot because the company has clearly decided Ross is better. Styles was not happy at getting the news, but later claimed that after being disappointed and then mad for about 90 minutes. He claimed he realized he's not where he needs to be for the position. Ross was flown to Omaha to produce the announcers and spent five hours, both on preparation and the show. And after the show, he was working with styles lots to unpack here. I really enjoy the, uh, the discussion about Joey styles in WWE, because I feel like so many of us who were big fans of his in ECW, when he came over to the company as excited as we may have been. It just felt weird. We wanted him to be the voice of ECW and now he's trying to be the voice of WWE. And it feels like pardon the pun, a bit of a styles clash between the way WWE presented it and the way, uh, you know, Paul Heyman had before. What do you recall about this switcheroo here on March 27th? I I really don't remember the, the switch that much. I'll say this about Joey styles. I thought Joey was very talented in many areas Unfortunately, Joey was only, if as far as his commentary goes, I think that Joey had done it so long in that ECW style of, oh my God, and all that, that that is, that's what Joey naturally fell back into. So, well, I think that Joey had a lot of talent, and, and I didn't think Joey was bad at all, frankly. Um, it was different. It was just different. And, you know, you also had Jim. Oh, you know, oh damn, I'm a play-by-play guy. Why can I do play-by-play? And Joey, you know, she, ACW. Um, I think it was a combination of a lot of things. Is it just Vince trying something on? maybe being told or beat upon, Hey, you got to do this. You got to, you got to give this guy a try. Or is it more events? Goddamn. How long does JR need to sit in that seat? Let's try some new things. And then whatever the case, it just not being the best fit for the style or, or the push that he wants. Yeah. I think that, you know, as far as putting someone else in that seat, that's been, (laughs) that's legendary as far as, from day one, Vince is always looking for who's, you know, who's the backup, who's next. Um, always, always want something simmering on the stove, you know, behind it so that it's ready to go. If you have to make a change or you have to make a move. And this was no different. Joe, he didn't come in to be, Oh my God, this is going to be the voice of the WWE for the next 30 years. Um, I think Michael Cole, you know, more than anything was done it by accident in a lot of respects, but I think Michael Cole is good. Michael gets knocked an awful lot. And I think Michael's a good play by play guy. Jr. was good play by play guy. Um, it just, it's the times it's the times. And sometimes you, you change things and you make a change and you realize, well, shit, maybe we want to change it back and, and go back to the way it was. And we'll keep looking for a different sound and a different look. Let me ask, do you think the timing of this is just based on Vince really wants to make sure that everything is perfect by the time it comes around to WrestleMania? I think so. And, and again, it, it's, um, whenever you look at 
that time of year. It's always a time of year of change and, and experimentation and, and trying new things. I think that you have the most eyeballs and a lot of people interested in the product at the time. And that's the time that you want to put your best foot forward. We know how uh, strongly Jr. feels about, you know, being the lead guy and having this opportunity. How tickled was he to get this call? Oh God. Well, I mean, it, it's, you remember, I told you the story about the iron Sheik winning the gimmick battle Royal. Yes. It was the iron Sheik. It was a Of course I win. <laughs> Who else would win, but the Sheiky baby. Uh, I think that Jim, in a lot of respects, is is the same way when it comes to this. Well, who, who else can put in there? Oh, Sassafras. <laughs> oh, damn. I, 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 you know, we, you, are, are y'all done playing your little games now? That you, that you're ready for the professional to, to step back into the booth and do what I do, Sassafras. That's tremendous. Give me another crown royal. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.